Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mallory and welcome to Crime Time with Mal. <laughs> These are not for sale, obviously. Um, I'm just cheesy and, you know, made me a Be Kind Crime Time with Mal shirt. Thank you so, so, so much for clicking on today's video. So today is going to be a unsolved case. And Evie Stepback was an attendant at Central High High School at Little Rock, Arkansas. Her dream was to become a cosmetologist and a real estate agent until she disappeared on October 25th, 2015. Now, days before Evie disappeared, she accused four men of doing some not so nice things to her at a party her and her friends attended. So let's find out what happened to Ebby. So Ebby Jane Stepback was born on March 31st, 1997, fellow Aries. Her parents are Lori and Michael Jernigan. Michael is her stepdad, and her dad is Peter Stepback, and they live in Little Rock, Arkansas. As always, please be kind down in the comments and do not mention anything bad about anybody that I mention in today's video. Just be nice and be kind, everybody. Just be kind. So they lived in Little Rock, Arkansas, and Ebby previously attended private school, but then eventually transitioned into public school, I believe fully in 2015. Now, as some teenagers, I know I was a rebel little thing. Ebby got new friends. She became, you know, a rebel. She was not listening to her parents. She was going out, not coming in at curfew, you know, just not listening and she was constantly fighting with her parents so her mom and her stepdad said you know look it's either respect us or you leave our house so ebby decided to leave and she got a roommate named danielle danielle says that ebby was super independent and there was no one that could not tell her nothing i think that's an aries thing you guys <laughs> like Aries all the way. On October 21st, 2015, Ebby missed school. And and then on Friday, October 23rd, Ebby went to a party at some point that evening. And the next day on October 24th, Ebby texted her stepdad Michael and was very upset and said that she was gained by four guys at the party she attended last night. And she wanted to report them to authorities. She was gun ho on getting some revenge. And allegedly, she said, I have to say allegedly, but she said that they recorded this whole entire incident on a cell phone. So upset, Ebby ended up saying that she was gonna take this to the cops and and her mom and stepdad tried to reach out to Ebby again and she didn't answer. Around 5.30 p.m. the next night, Ebby called her older brother, Trevor, and Trevor described to Lori, their mother, that, that Ebby was very disoriented, more so than just being, you know, high or drunk, and that she was just completely out of it. And Ebby also said that she didn't know where she was and only said that she was in her car. Then, Ebby was gone. When Lori couldn't get a hold of Ebby the night before, she turned to the police, but the police told her that they couldn't file the police report for 12 more hours. And to my understanding, that is not true. If you know somebody that has been missing, you don't have to report them after 12, 24 hours or 12 hours. You can report them immediately. In fact, those 12, 24 hours are probably the most crucial. So days move along and family and friends are passing out flyers to find Ebby and they start to begin to fear the worst. A week later, Ebby's Volkswagen Passat is found in Chalamont Park, her phone, her purse, her medication, all in Ebby's car and her keys. And Danielle, Ebby's friend, said that she would never leave her keys in her car, let alone any of that other stuff. And Ebby's makeup was all scattered throughout the car. And remember, she's going to cosme she wants to go to cosmetology school. Ebby loved makeup. There is no way that she would leave her makeup in the car alone, 
let alone leave it, you know, broken and scattered everywhere. Little Rock Police Department searched Chalamont Park and they claimed to search the drainage pipes over in that area as well, only to find nothing. Months passed and leads came up empty. At one point, dogs were brought out to the park, but their investigation just ran cold. The site that Ebby's car was found eventually became a memorial site with some beautiful flowers and the case got national attention. Detective Tommy Hudson was assigned to the case by the police department and he says that his number one job is to bring a voice to those that got their voice stolen. So while he was digging and all of this evidence, Dr. Phil picked up this case and decided to profile Ebby's disappearance, which is huge. And Lori, Ebby's mom, filed a police complaint with the Little Rock Police Department. Lori says that a ton of mistakes were made in this investigation. She claims that Ebby's case was not taken seriously and very mishandled. When Ebby's car was found, it rained for days and police allegedly left the trunk open while it was at the impound and it ruined everything. All evidence that would have been in the trunk is now gone. People weren't interviewed and they just weren't thorough. Danielle, Ebby's roommate slash best friend, was just constantly walking the woods in hopes that she would find Ebby or find some sort of lead that could lead her to where Ebby was. As Detective Tommy Hudson continued to look over the case, something did not sit quite right with him. He said that there was some evidence that they were initially looking at on scene when Ebby disappeared that bothered him. So Hudson and officials went back to Chalamont Park with bulldozers this time and they sent cameras down the drainage pipes and when they hit an obstruction they started to dig up that section of the pipe and there they found Ebby's body. FBI brought their evidence recovery team out and they found the majority of Ebby's remains. Hudson said that during the time that Ebby was reported missing that there was a ton of rain at that time and most likely that's probably what made Ebby's body be so far down in the drainage pipes. And Hudson says there were stories of a really bad smell around that area. And in 2018, Marjorie Foley and her daughter were in that area and they came across a smell after Ebby's disappearance and she said they called it in. It was dismissed by them when they arrived on scene and Lori is just pissed to say the least. Like here you are two and a half years later. I don't know if I mentioned that but that's when they found Ebby's body was two and a half years later at Chalamont Park where they where her car last was. Like, I would be so furious that that's where she was this whole damn time. Like, this whole time. Just to know that those drainage pipes and where they found Ebby was 60 feet from Ebby's car. 60 feet. That's it. So close. Police officers are not sharing or releasing any details of how Ebby passed or if they have suspects or even anybody that is a person of interest. They are very, very hush-hush on this case. Like they are with a lot, but I feel like this case, there's not a lot of information since her remains were found. And Detective Hudson, you know, he doesn't really understand why police officers did not drain the pipes in the first place when she disappeared, if she was in that area, they should have just drained the pipes and looked in there anyway, which they should have. But they are saying it's a homicide investigation and that's all they're saying. And rightfully so, Ebby's friends and family just want answers. They deserve answers. Somebody has to know something, like somebody had to have seen Ebby. They have to know something. And stuff like this, like when somebody just disappears, it just boggles my mind like nobody saw them nobody they just poof you know I mean she was obviously last at Chalamont Park somebody did something to her somebody had to have seen something at that park so if y'all know anything no matter how small it is 
investigators are begging you, even if it's the smallest bit of detail, to please call it in. So you are encouraged to call 501 504 3128. In this case, just just like that, nothing else. And so much time has gone by without answers to this poor family. And actually in April of 2019, I feel so bad for Lori, but her son Trevor passed away of, I believe a heart attack. He was like 35 years old in Oh my gosh, to bury both of your children, no parent, mother, no one should have to deal with that. That's not how the cycle of life should work. You know what I mean? Like you're supposed to bury your parents. Your parents aren't supposed to bury their children. I'm sorry, I'm getting choked up here because I am a mama too and I would lose my mind if something happened to one of my kids, let alone both of my kids. I y'all would have to put me up in a padded cell somewhere like seriously you guys like i don't know what i would do so my heart goes out to her family and i really really am praying every single day they will be in my prayers and thoughts that some type of closure can happen with this family so please with every like and every share it gets the word out for ebby and i appreciate it more than you know y'all support on my channel is beyond words i'm beyond grateful and thankful for y'all like you have no idea i hope y'all had an amazing thanksgiving and thank you so so very much i cannot wait to see where my channel goes next year without y'all it would not be growing like it is and y'all see the numbers and how my channel is growing and just to y'all commenting and saying that i deserve it really truly warms my heart so so much and i can't thank y'all enough so thank you so very much i will see y'all in my next video and i hope y'all have a great day remember be kind. Be kind to everyone, everywhere. You never know what somebody's going through. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.